I love observations and the natural environment. Thinking back to why climatology, why the environment, why natural landscape, I think I always had this um, love for putting things together, putting the pieces together, and so um, wherever I happen to be, I mean, whether it's walking through Centennial Woods or, you know, flying on a plane or whatever, it's always trying to see what the pieces are and how they kind of fit together. Once you know what drives you and what makes you tick, it, it helps you to sort of pick what you want to do as, as a life career. So I think um, for me, the big word would be observations. There's certain types of climatologists who spend a lot of time doing instrumentation and measurements, and I spend most of my time interacting with folks or, or using data. For me, doing a lot of computer-based work, being out and making observations like this, or connecting with people one-on-one, -on -one, giving presentations, they're all part of the same thing, which is sharing my knowledge and understanding with people regardless of what form or shape it looks like. If there's somebody that could be helped by something that I've observed or some piece of the puzzle that I've been able to contribute to, I think that's, that's essentially what, what, what drives me and what makes me tick. I, I think I give presentations to pretty much everybody who asks. It's, it's also a chance to, to, to bring some of the, the latest pieces of information, the latest understandings um, into part of the conversation because as an educator, um, that for me is, is one of my biggest contributions to be able to, to, to share that, that, that latest cutting edge study that helps to move the needle in, in our understanding so that we do a better job in whatever that better job happens to be. I think what we've seen in the last few years is that the incidence of drought, the types of drought, the length or the severity of drought in the Northeast, in, in Vermont, has actually become more severe and that means that we need to pay uh, a little bit more attention to both understanding it, monitoring it, tracking it, and being proactive about it. When we think about drought, it's not just how much precipitation fell or didn't fall. It's also, what are your soils doing? Are they drying out? What are your lakes and ponds doing? The understanding of drought needs to come a little bit more into the public lexicon um, so that we can appreciate why we need to be uh, monitoring continuously, why we need to share our observations. So if somebody's well ran dry or if somebody's municipal water supply ran dry, you know, when it all gets said and done, all of this um, goes up to the federal level in the form of the U.S. Drought Monitor. And that's a product that allows um, federal assistance to be triggered if need be. When climate change exacerbates the, the frequency, the intensity, the severity, the duration, all those characteristics of, of those events, then that sets up uh, uh, the question of, are peoples prepared? How do we use some of these events that we have observed to help us from a preparedness perspective? For me, because it's, it's people first, I'd like to know them making a difference in some way, shape or form, and so um, I, I think that stems to the, the type of research that I do. So if, if, if nobody's gonna benefit from it, then I probably wouldn't be doing it.